Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dwayne's World. So today might be a sad, sad mo. You wanna find out what I mean? You better stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to season two, episode nine here on Dwayne's World. So Dwayne, why is it a sad mo? Don't you always enjoy the mow? I absolutely always enjoy the mow. The reason why it's a sad mow is because my perennial rye, the days that I have left to mow are absolutely numbered. And the reason why is because of the fact that I have to spray it out. You know, probably in the next week or so, I'll be doing that. And the transition between the perennial rye and the Bermuda is going to be the answer to whether or not I choose to overseed again next fall. So the jury's still out on that one. We'll see how the transition goes, but that's why it's so important if you did overseed that you do properly spray it out because it can definitely affect the green up if you choose not to. Now, some people may believe, well, Dwayne, the heat's gonna take care of it. Don't you worry. That's true to a certain extent, but my front lawn doesn't get as much sun as my back lawn. And that's what has me a little concerned on whether or not the transition is gonna go the way I hope it is. All right, in addition to actually throwing down some serious stripe action today, I'm also going to be throwing down some pre-emergent. Now you may be thinking, Dwayne, Dwayne, you're late. What are you doing? You should have thrown it down already. Yeah, I agree. However, my front lawn generally is about five degrees cooler in the soil temperature than my back lawn. And in my back lawn, I did apply it really early and there's no problem with applying it really early. But I also knew that if any weeds did break out, I'll be throwing down the Celsius to kill the perennial rye. I'll be kind of killing two birds with one stone at that point. And that way, I'll be able to take care of all the weeds that are in my lawn currently, and the pre-emergent will prevent future ones from coming back up. So with that, let's go ahead and get onto the mow. All right, so this will be using today to mow the perennial rye, 20 inch GR series McLean. Now the groove roller you see here is actually not one from real rollers, but in fact, it's actually for a California trimmer that's been adapted to the real roller bracketry. Now the Honda GX motors are my absolute favorite motors, but I will say that this Briggs and Stratton motor has absolutely grown on me. It's been very reliable and look forward to it continuing to do the work as we go into the growing season with the Bermuda. And with that, let's get on to our mow. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring the camera around to the opposite side because the sun's on the opposite side of me. But one of the things I've been absolutely loving about the perennial rye, in addition to the stripe action, is the color. The color just looks phenomenal. But as you guys can see here, as I kind of turn the corner, the stripe action is absolutely on point. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do a double cut. I'm gonna go ahead and run the McLean in a slightly different direction and see if I can get a diamond pattern with that stripe action. And with that, let's get on to the mow.
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look here. You know, I got to be honest, it was definitely more difficult to run this stripe action going this way. And it's only because the last time I mowed, I went ahead and mowed my, with my 25 inch McLean. And I think I was still seeing some of those other stripes and it was confusing me. But definitely happy with the way this double cut came out. Again, like I mentioned, it is absolutely going to be very sad to have to spray this out in another week. What am I doing? Uh, but let me go ahead and take it around to the other side here, uh, just so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, there we go. Absolutely loving it. Absolutely on point. So with that, let's go ahead and throw down our pre-emergent. All right, so this is the pre-emergent I'm going to be going with today. It's prodiamine, just like I used on my back lawn, just in a different form. This is going to be a liquid form here. This is prodiamine 65 DG. Let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like. All right, as you guys can see there, it's just a granular that actually is going to dissolve once we hit it with water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure out how much we're going to need to be able to cover the front lawn. All right, so I'm just going to slowly pour 0.8 ounces. Now, if I go a little over, that's okay. I can go ahead and just pour some back into this container if I need to. That's 0.3, close to 0 0.4, 0 0.5, getting close, it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7. All right, there we go, a little over 0 0.8, that's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. All right, so as you guys can see there, I need to mix it up, but there is the prodiamine. I'm gonna go ahead and add Lawn Stars Liquid Aerator. You do not have to do this in order to make your pre-emergent more effective. What I wanna use this for is really generally to darken up the solution so that way I can see where I'm spraying versus using a blue marker dye. This is gonna help me be able to see where I last sprayed. In addition to my front soil is very compacted. I think this is definitely gonna help the Bermuda come out of transition a little bit quicker, just because anytime there's water, it's gonna absorb into the soil much better. All right, so I'm not gonna go ahead and measure out how much I'm gonna need here. It really is only one ounce per thousand is generally the recommended rate. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just eyeball it. It's okay if it's a little bit over, a little bit under, not needing to be exact when it comes to this. All right, so as you guys can see there, I'm going to go ahead and mix it up. The prodiamine is not going to be as yellow, but again, it's really that dark solution that's going to make it easier for me to be able to see where I last sprayed. I mentioned this in previous videos in the past, but depending on which type of backpack sprayer you like, it's ultimately your choice. However, one of the things I think is the best thing you can do for any backpack sprayer is to make sure you're using the right tips. So in the case of prodiamine, which is a soil applicator, you want to be using a flood jet tip so it can get down into the soil. In the past, I've used other tips such as a foliar tip or an air induction tip, but in this particular application today, Flood Jet is the one to go with. You absolutely want to make sure you do water in the pre-emergent or plan it at any time where you're going to have rain in the forecast. You know, we may get rain in the next few days, but at the same time, I just want to give it a good soaking here. And that way, the pre-emergent can start to go to work. All right, guys, this is where Dwayne's World keeps it real. But I have a small leak at the bottom of my backpack sprayer. Mm -mm -mm. Hey guys, when I said it was going to be a sad mo. I didn't mean it from the standpoint that my backpack sprayer was going to break. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, it is what it is. You know, I always got to keep it real here on Dwayne's World. You know, if I have pain, you guys are going to see it. And that is a little painful. I did not want to have to buy a new backpack sprayer or get this one fixed. I don't know. I'll look at every option and I always do what makes sense. And you guys are going to have to subscribe and follow my content if you're going to want to see what's going to happen in the near future. Will I replace it? Will I fix it? Or will I do both? And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And as always, be excellent and party on.